If you guys want a brand new 2024 NFL mock draft, pretty much as soon as the Super Bowl ends, then like today's video right now. If it's something you want, I'll make sure we stay late here and get that done. We're going to break down the top 50 big board from Daniel Jeremiah. We'll go quicker on a lot of these names, so it's not a 50-minute video. Let's we'll focus on more of the ones that I view as interesting uh, spots for these prospects. Number one, number two, no major surprises there. Uh, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr. They're studs. They're going to be early-round picks. I, I can't be mad at it. What was surprising, number three, Rome Dunzier out of Washington. Over the quarterbacks, over the wide uh, receivers, I was not ready for a Dunesier to be at that high spot. I like him a lot. I think he's an awesome football player. I have him as wide receiver three, although he does have a pretty solid first-round grade for him. But I was not ready for him to be at number three on this list. Four and five, they make plenty of sense. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, that's three QBs in the top five. Very high on, on this quarterback class for Daniel Jeremiah, who, by the way, I like a lot of his stuff. I don't always agree. That's a good thing, by the way. Um, but I think, I think DJ's got really good insight, really good film study, all that stuff that makes it valuable. And his boards also have a tendency to kind of match up with how the NFL views things, too. First defensive player, Terion Arnold. Enter the year as the other Alabama corner, and more and more buzz that I continue to hear of him being just the Bama corner for this year's draft class. I, I, I would not put him at six myself. I, I like the player a lot. The, he's got all the traits that you like. I, I, I do think that, hey, you know, team stood him more than the other guy kind of does raise some concerns for me, but he can go inside and out. He's young, he's talented, he's gifted, and in a not great de, you know, de, de, defensive class, I wouldn't be shocked that shocked if he ended up being the first defensive player taken. So who is the best defensive player in this 2024 NFL draft class? Uh, teaser alert, there's two guys. Actually, let's, let's go three guys in the top 15 for DJ. It's not unique, but that's kind of how most people's boards are going to stack up. Sound off for me in the comments. section, the pinned comment of today's video right now. All right, number seven is Malik Neighbors. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to have... Neighbors higher a little bit. Uh, offensive heavy class here. Brock Bowers is eight. No complaints. Awesome football player. Joe Alt is number nine, the Notre Dame defense tackle. Awesome football player. Uh, Dallas Turner, we'll get to uh, the other edge I like a lot here later on. But I think Turner is, you know, first round great. Not as good as Will Anderson, but a very good prospect in his own right. He's number 10. A surprise here at number 11. Taliese Fuaga. The Oregon State's offensive tackle, who I think there is a universe that exists in which he goes off the board before number 12, Olu Fashanu, and certainly off the board before uh, J.C. Latham at number 13, but offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. Fuaga's length is not necessarily ideal, but he is a mauler in, in the ground game. First round grade from me, too. I love Olu Fashanu, kind of an inverse, not as good as in pass protect, or not as good as a run blocker, but awesome pass Protector, great prospect. This is four offensive tackles in the top 13. That shows you how good this, this, cl this class is. Jared Verse is 14. I'm okay with it. Uh, maybe a little bit early, but not, not that much earlier uh, 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 on the list. Brian Thomas Jr. is number 15. That one I like. Uh, kind of the other LSU receiver. When you're big, tall, and fast... Uh, you're going to go early in the draft. Uh, he's The Colts at 15, by the way, are a great spot for him. Oh, look, three more offensive linemen. Yeah, this class is stacked up front. And we got more to come still, by the way. Troy Fontenu, uh, who DJ put as a tackle. He might be a guard in the NFL, but just because of, again, some late length concerns. But he was the best offensive lineman on uh, the best offensive line in college football. Prime means are pretty good. Uh, Tyler Guyton and Amarius Mims, a little bit more raw, needs some more development, but the, the upside and traits could even be top two or top three in this loaded offensive line class. So if you are a team 
in the market for offensive line help, good news. There will be guys for you in the first round. Today's show made possible by our good friends over at Prize Picks. I'm a big fan of Prize Picks. It's just you against the numbers playing daily fantasy. You don't have to worry about battling thousands of other players and pros and sharks and sharps. It's just you against the numbers. Can you beat them? If you do, boom, it's that simple. You come out on top. Two to six player staff uh, projections. The, you can do the power play. It's all in. Got to get all three or four or five or six or whatever right. Or the flex play. And I love the flex play because it makes I come out a lot more on top. I'm really good about getting all but, but one right. So I do, the, I do, do the flex play. Got to know your own strengths and weaknesses, man. Here's my flex play prize picks for the Super Bowl. Christian McCaffrey, more than 18.5 carries. Travis Kelsey, more than 70.5 receiving yards. And Rasheed Rice, less than 6.5 catches. You can take my picks as well and get a first deposit match up to $100 by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. Again, first deposit match up to 100 bucks with that URL and promo code pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. If you don't know the name Quinion Mitchell, you're probably not sub because we've talked about him. Uh, 19th on DJ's big board, the number two corner. Not sure he'll be number two for me, but look, if he played for Ohio State, he would be a household name. He doesn't. There are concerns that come along with that, but there's a lot of talent in that corner. First off-ball linebacker, Edrin Cooper. Uh, everyone knows the name Jeremiah Trotter. I think DJ's right. I like Cooper a lot more. Not sure top 20 more, uh, but there is plenty to like about his game and kind of a do-it-all linebacker in a maybe not a great round one class, but there's some really good day two players here. Some more, I think, likely round one picks. Liatu Latu and Byron Murphy, UCLA, Texas. Uh, medical red flags for Latu. That's got to be sorted out. Not great length either. Kind of showing up early on in the senior bowl. And Byron Murphy out of, out of Texas. Three technique, very disruptive football player. Quarterback time, it's Bo Nix at number 23 overall. Uh, the, the differences in opinion in Bo, Bo Nix, not just from like media scouts, but the NFL is going to be vastly different. There might be some round one grades on him. Like, DJ has. There will be some round three or later grades on him. There's, it's, it's not there. Uh, I think Lance has, has a top ten grade on him, which is insane to me. I, there's a lot of concerns I have, but the mobility, some of the accuracy, is really intriguing, and he is a million times better than he ever was at Auburn. So prediction time: Will Bo Nix go in round one? Why for yes and for no? Get those predictions in for me in the comments section. And it's Rake Straw also kind of starting to rise up some boards here. I don't know if 20, 24 might be a tinge high for me, uh, but I, I, the more and more I look at this corner class, I go, uh, he's, a, he's a mid to late round one guy. He's a mid to late round one guy. Rake Straw can sneak in that range as well. Chop Robinson, production's not great. Athletic ability is, and those guys go early. The most surprising thing to me was Devontez Walker, or just Tez, the Kent State to UNC transfer uh, and the more and more I wonder if, if, uh, if maybe DJ just likes vertical threats, which is fine. Everyone has their type. Uh, that's a very good vertical threat, uh, wide receiver. 26 is, is, this is the thing I disagree with most. That's, that's too early for me and his overall game. JJ McCarthy, number 27, I think has more upside than Bo Nix does because where JJ McCarthy is at age wise is not that different than where Bo Nix was at when he was at Auburn. I think that stuff should be considered. The arm strength's really good. The mobility is impressive too, but there's a lot of bust potential as well. Uh, three more very possible round one defensive players here. Jerzon Newton. Ah, I'm a sucker for an undersized defensive tackle. Cooper DeGene has got to think more of a zone corner, but very good at that role. Great straight line speed too. I... I <sighs> I've been burned by the type of corner that Nate Wiggins is before, guys like uh, Kyer Elam, but I like him a lot too. It's, it's a dangerous uh, game to play at corner. You don't want to just you know overreact to the misses over the years, but I, I think Wiggins in top 30 is a smart choice there. Now, the 2024 NFL Draft will be here before you know it. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button 
For more NFL draft videos right here on Chat Sports. Jordan Morgan, uh, not great length, by the way. That's going to be a red flag for many a team out there at number 31 overall. I will not lie to you guys. I have not done Darius Robinson yet. Uh, he's, he's, of course, on my list. I have not gotten to him. So I was quite surprised to see DJ put him at 32. I know there's some very intriguing length there, uh, but I, I, I got to do more work on that one. So I, I'm going to trust DJ's eyes on, on that player. Three offensive players I like. Graham Barton out of Duke, interior offensive lineman. Jackson Powers Johnson. Oh, look, more offensive linemen in the top 35. It's a great class for it. Uh, JPJ has been great to begin the Senior Bowl, by the way. A.D. Mitchell was a little inconsistent for me, but the, the traits are good uh, out of Texas. Uh, I, I still love Kool-Aid McKinstry, by the way. Uh... There's been a, a pretty steady drop for him in, in, the, in the media boards as things have gone along. You're not, not just DJ, it's his first one, but like just overall. Um, chance, I am missing something. I have visions of Tease Tabor dancing in my head, who I thought was going to be a star. And like people are like, ah, he's slow. I'm like, yeah, but I don't see much of it on film. And then he was slow. And that's the concern right now with Kool-Aid McKinstry. That said, imagine not thinking a corner named Kool-Aid isn't going to be an awesome player. Could not be me. Who is your favorite NFL draft prospect in this year's class? Because he's not my favorite, but if I can get him at the beginning of round two, he might be. Sound off for me who your guy is in the comments section. Uh, Dan Campbell is going to have Zach Frazier as, as his answer for this question, by the way. No, 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 they, they won't take him. They're, they're good at center. Uh, this is the dude who broke his leg uh, when West Virginia was trying to move the ball downfield late in a game, and rather than not get off the field and make him, you know, do the clock run off or call timeout, whatever, he crawled off the field with a broken leg. This is like, if you look up Glass Eater, football guy, it's going to be a picture of Zach Frazier in there. Uh, coaches are going to love this dude. Two more receivers, Keon Coleman, Troy Franklin, if you need separation from your uh, receiver, it's not Keon Coleman's game, uh, but I love his game beyond that. Uh, I think he still, should still be around one player. Franklin's got a little, little thin, but he has speed. Number 40, Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. Medical concerns are a big red flag here. Uh, I think some of just beyond the medical, I think like being able to handle di different pressures and when he's forced off his spot, was fine against Texas, was bad against Michigan. Which one is it? It's a little bit of both in the end. Uh, plus the rest of his sample size, too. I, chance he goes round one, I'm, it's very gambly for me. So how many quarterbacks do you think go in round one of the NFL draft? One, two, three, four, five, six? Get your predictions in for me right now. All right, more players. Uh, JT Sanders and Xavier Worthy, two Texas boys. The clear-cut number two tight end and another speedy wide receiver. Maybe that's just DJ's type. Uh, Kamari Lasseter, he's going to be a good corner uh, out of Georgia. Plus, those guys always end up going in, in round one. Uh, Lad McConkey. if anyone comps this man to like a Wes Welker or a Julian Edelman, we can call them out for it because that is not who he is. Uh, he offers you more outside ability than those guys ever did. Uh, my buddy Compton to Brandon Cooks. And I love that comp. Uh, that's my guy, Dalton. I love that comp for him. Junior Colson, by the way, linebacker. You know, trauma for some fan bases that don't want more Michigan players, but he's a dog at linebacker. I like him being L LB2. Chris Braswell, kind of an edge rusher out of Alabama. Uh, you know, I think could sneak it back in around one. Not, not an elite edge class this year. Peyton Wilson, you could, if you told me pure talent, He's the best off-ball linebacker. I'd say, you know what? I get it. Double-digit surgeries is a, a, about as big of a medical red flag as you will find. Therefore, he is a day-two pick by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Tavondre Sweat, uh, run-stopping nose guard. Offers a little bit of pass rush juice, too, by the way. Marshawn Nealon, again, an edge out of Western Michigan. I love how Western Michigan has just different headshots from everybody else on ESPN. But I, I respect the hell out of it. Uh, also, something he's getting some, off to a good start at the Senior Bowl as we film this. 
And then Malachi Corley. Everyone wants the next Debo Samuel. There are some similarities here uh, with their strengths and weaknesses and body types. Uh, but of course, you're not going to find many Debos because Debo is unique. Who did Daniel Jeremiah leave off of his top 50 list? I'm sure there are some prospects. Sound off for me in the comments right now.